Hello, I'm Rachel Carpenter, the founder and CEO of Intrinio. We've been helping our clients navigate the complex world of market data for a decade and decided to break down the basics in this three-part video series. You are watching part one, where we'll cover stock exchange mechanics, define pricing data, and talk about the different types of pricing data. If you want to learn more about how we are using technology to make financial data easier for innovators and fintech companies, you can click on the link in the description to chat with our team. All right, let's get started. Exchanges, brokerage, custody, and clearing. A stock exchange is a place where investors can buy or sell shares of a publicly traded company. Technically, they've been around since the 1400s, and today there are over 60 exchanges around the world. The process starts with brokerage firms and platforms like Fidelity, Vanguard, or Alpaca, where buyers and sellers meet to broker a trade. Then, stock exchanges like NASDAQ or the New York Stock Exchange facilitate the transaction and the Depository Trust Clearing Corporation, or the Options Clearing Corporation, help to clear and settle trades, acting as a counterparty to guarantee completion for the transaction. Lastly, financial market custodians like Bank of New York Mellon or JP Morgan Chase hold the securities for safekeeping, things like administering dividends or stock splits. Seem complicated? It is. But blockchain platforms are starting to decentralize and simplify the process of brokerage, clearing, and custody. We may see this process change drastically in the next decade, so stay tuned for a video on this soon. Next, what is a stock price? In the process that we've just outlined, a stock's price is determined by the amount of supply and demand. If there's more supply, the price goes down. If there's more demand, the price goes up. A potential buyer will make a bid, and then a seller will make an ask, creating the bid price and the ask price. The difference between the bid and the ask is defined as the spread. And when the two prices meet, the stock is priced. A sale of stock occurs when an exchange matches a bid and ask price, and that transaction becomes the most recent stock price that most people are familiar with. This transaction is referred to as the last price, and it updates continuously across all venues where a stock trades. The stock price changes every single time a transaction is completed. Since all of this action is happening at the exchange level, the stock exchanges are the creators, owners, and disseminators of stock price data. The major exchanges include NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, BATS, CBOE, and Memex but there are dozens of other small exchanges in the United States. The lion's share of trading happens on the three largest exchanges, NASDAQ, CBOE, and NYSE. So the most accurate and commonly used stock price feeds come from those three exchanges. So who uses stock price data? Why does this data exist? This data ends up everywhere. Academics use it for research. Individual retail investors, professional investors, high-frequency traders, and quants use it for research and making investment decisions. News stations and platforms, developers, and fintech companies use it to display in front of their customers. This type of pricing and market data forms the lifeblood of investment decisions across the country. Next, we're going to talk about why there is no real stock price. Because of a feature of SEC regulations, referred to as an Unlisted Trading Privileges, or UTP. Stock in a company can trade simultaneously on many exchanges, even though that stock only has a single listing exchange. This means that the price of that stock, the last sale, is updating in many places at once. Exchanges that have more trade activity or higher volume have what is arguably considered to be higher quality stock price data because the trades are more indicative of the overall market appetite. However, every single exchange sells their own pricing feed, and no one pricing feed will look the same. Remember, billions of shares of stock are traded every day. So how can we trust any stock price feed above another? In 2005, the Securities and Exchange Commission 
developed a concept called the NBBO, or National Best Bid and Offer. The NBBO provides a consolidated view of the highest bid and lowest ask from multiple exchanges. The NBBO is determined and disseminated by just two security information processors, or SIPs. The SEC determined that the two SIPs to be NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange. Currently, these are the only two companies that can redistribute NBBO pricing, but regulations are changing rapidly. So what are the pros of using NBBO data? This is arguably the most accurate pricing data on the market. It is vetted and verified by two of the largest exchanges in the world. However, it comes at a hefty price. There's a limited supply of these feeds and the exchanges price them at a premium. So who uses the NBBO? Frankly, this level of data is not necessary for most investors or app developers unless you are actively participating in high frequency trading or executing trades on behalf of clients. It's also important to note that the SEC requires brokers give their clients access to the NBBO price at the point of order entry. This is highly regulated. So if you plan on engaging in brokerage activities or building a brokerage platform, you're going to want to make sure you are subscribed to a true NBBO feed. Next, we'll talk about the different types of pricing or market data. Pricing data tells us how much a security, like a stock or an ETF, costs at a certain time. The easiest way to understand the different types of market data is to ask what time the security was at a specific, specified price. Most data consumers want to know the real-time price. For options contracts, ETFs, stocks, bonds, and many cryptocurrencies, the price of those instruments updates whenever markets are open. The real-time price can come from the exchanges where the securities trade whenever a sale is made, or from SIPs, OPRA, or other authorities that consolidate trade data from multiple venues. Real-time data comes in two different flavors, streaming and snap. Streaming quotes are pushed to data consumers whenever an update occurs, usually via a WebSocket API or a direct connection to an exchange's servers. Snap quotes are requests to update the stock price sent from the data consumer to the data producer, usually in the form of a REST API request. We'll cover these two types of delivery methods in part two of the video series. Delayed data refers to real-time data that has been delayed and possibly aggregated over specific time intervals. Sometimes security data only updates once a day. Net asset values or NAVs for mutual funds are a good example. In some cases, as with options data, real-time data is so big that it can help to filter it down to less than real-time so that it becomes easier to analyze. For many types of pricing data, such as stock prices, delayed data is much cheaper to access than real-time data. End-of-day data refers to the final closing price for a security when trading ends for the day. This time can vary depending on the exchange. 15-minute delayed data is another common form of delayed data since many exchanges consider any data with less than 15 minutes of delay to be real-time and thus more expensive. Tick data usually refers to a historical record of every movement in a security's price and is commonly sought after for back testing. Tick data can be unwieldy, and so many data consumers organize historical intraday data into interval bars. Interval bars take snapshots of a security's price at different intervals, such as one minute, five minute, or 10 minutes. The key to understanding the different flavors of real-time and delayed market data is recognizing that they each serve a different use case and have a different financial cost. Data consumers should match their use case to the most affordable type of data available. All right, you've just learned about brokerage, clearing, custody, and stock exchanges. These functions underpin the concept of stock price data or market data. We've covered how the data is created, use cases for the data, and why there is no single real stock price at any given moment in time. Finally, we went through all of the different types of market data that are available for purchase. If this seems complicated, don't worry. Buying the wrong kind of data can result in buckets of wasted money or regulatory problems, but at Intrinio, we help investors and fintech companies navigate this complex landscape and match their use case to the right market data feed. Click the link in our bio to chat with our team and learn more. Market Data 101 Part 2 is up next. 
where we'll dive into even more detail. If this content was helpful, please make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more fintech and financial data content. Thanks for listening. And as we like to say at Entrinio, we can't wait to see what you build with this data.